I'm at Moraine Lake and I have the lake this morning all to myself. Well, apart from my mate Josh, who's just stood over there. Hey. But if you want to find out how to get it to yourself and avoid the crowds, keep watching. Step one, make sure the road is plowed and free of snow, but still closed to traffic. There's no real easy way of doing this in all honesty, and it kind of comes from word of mouth or seeing it on social media, or even going down there and trying to cycle the road yourself. However, the road does have avalanche risks on it. So if you're not 100% sure it's safe, then don't go. And this window is normally really, really small. It opens to traffic and buses on the 1st of June, and quite often it's just a couple of days beforehand where you might have the opportunity to get down there. Step two, get hold of some bikes or get hold of a friend that has loads of bikes. Hey Josh. Hey. <laughs> Step three, wake up a ridiculous hour and drive to Lake Louise. the Moraine Lake Road. So probably easier said than done in all honesty. It is about 14 kilometers each way with about 500 meters of elevation gain. And I consider myself a pretty fit guy to be honest. And you know, it's not been the easiest. There's been a fair amount of uphill. And at the moment the road is closed to traffic. But I think if the road was open to cars, it wouldn't be a lot of fun in all honesty. There's not a huge amount of kind of hard shoulder for, uh, for bikes. Like look, this is the Moraine Lake car park. I have never seen this not completely full. At 2 a.m., 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., all night, all day, the car park is always full, or has been for the last few years. But today, it's empty. It's just us. Step five, enjoy the serenity. Kind of strange being here when there's nobody else here. Like in the last few years, Moraine Lake has become really, really popular. At any time of day and night, there's people all around the shorefront on the rock pile, waiting for sunrise, watching the stars. You know, the car park's full 24 seven. So to be here when there's nobody around, like it's pretty cool. Now these viewpoints in the summer were always really, really busy. There'd be people waiting for the sun to rise, kind of sat around on the walls and all over the rocks. Like now for this year, they are changing the way you can access Moraine Lake and it is kind of bus only really, so no private vehicles. So I don't know how that will change. But cycling in before the road opens properly means I get these locations all to myself. And even though the sunrise probably isn't gonna be the best this morning, we have this kind of low cloud just here blocking the sun. I should probably take advantage of the fact that there's no one here and take some pictures. I find the hardest thing with Moraine Lake 
is really to get any kind of images that are even close to original, to be honest with you. I always try and find something kind of interesting in the foreground. And I think a few years ago, I peaked where I got some really nice tree roots with some, uh, with some fresh snow on top. But I'm having a bit of a wander around to see what I can find. And it's, it, it can be a bit of a weird place to photograph sometimes because you, if you want to get foreground interest or something interesting going on, you probably need wider than 16 mil a lot of the time to get that, unless you're shooting landscape. But I'm going to carry on having a look and uh, see what I can find. Here's that image from a few years ago. Probably one of my favourites from Moraine. On this occasion, I found a foreground I was really happy with. A little sprinkling of fresh snow and those roots just leading the eye towards the mountains. So I've come a little bit higher up the bank. Like at this time of year, which is actually only mid-May, and you can't even normally get down here at this time of year, but early in the season, the lake is always really, really low. So I've come a little bit higher up the bank just to try and get a better perspective. And like, I've never actually been here when it's had kind of like this broken up ice before. So I feel like I should get some shots of that. You can see behind me that the, uh, now the sun's kind of come up a bit more and it's warming up a bit, that we're getting quite a lot of rippling in the lake. So I think I'm gonna actually try and go a little bit tighter. So maybe get rid of the last couple of peaks on the right hand side here, and then do a longer exposure, just to try and smooth out those ripples a little bit, just to see what I get. So I've now come back down to the shorefront and I really want to kind of maximize those floating kind of ice shelves that are in the lake. As well as the fact that now there's a lot of rocks actually in the foreground that would normally be submerged under the water. So I can kind of show you the shot that I've got. So it's these rocks here that would normally be actually completely under the water. And then we've got a few floating ice shelves and then what I've done, I've gone a little bit tighter in here and just kind of cut off that last little peak on the uh, right hand side, just here. But I think that still works pretty well. Again, using a longer exposure to kind of smooth out any ripples that are remaining in the water, but coming lower down has actually got rid of most of those as well. But let me show you what I got. You might just be able to see that the light is now coming in and hitting the valley of the 10 peaks behind me. Thought I'd grab a landscape version of that shot as well. Again, using these kind of rocks on the lower left, kind of a, a good like lead in lines, but also add a bit of foreground interest. So let me know what you think. I think I've got a couple of uh, pretty decent images there, but you kind of always do from a rain lake. They might not be original, but they look pretty nice. It's been great kind of coming here at this time of year and having to make the effort to get in. Weirdly though, it kind of feels like Moraine Lake did five or six years ago when you came at sunrise and there was like five to 10 people kind of in and around the rock pile. But unfortunately, like last year, that just wasn't the case and it was incredibly busy. So now that's the effort you have to put in if you want to get it to yourself or get it on a quiet morning. 14 kilometer cycle each way, 500 meters of elevation gain and getting up at 2 a.m. But what do you think? Was it worth it? And once again, thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping soon I will be able to do a video about photographing here at sunrise when the road is open to the kind of bus traffic. I know there's a new bus service that will allow us to get here for sunrise full photography now. So I'll have more information about that soon. So be sure to subscribe. Hopefully I will see you on the next one.